the first observation then will be that currently, uh, in my opinion, there are no fields of translators or of translation proper. While there is an international field of translation studies, more on this later. Let me explain why uh, I hold this view, which uh, I know has been uh, criticized, and uh, many people disagree with, uh, with this, but uh, I seize the opportunity to uh, detail exactly what I have in mind there. The most successful attempts made by sociologists of, tra of translation uh, in the short length of time since the idea emerged uh, that translation could be viewed not only as a social fact, but with a sociological eye, the most successful attempts have been studies of the field of publishing in a given national context, usually the one in which the researcher was born and educated. That is a field in which, among other pu publications, some happened to have been translated from another context. Sociologies of translation so far typically strive to apply and test, hopefully, models designed and developed in and for home base to products whose specificities, whether they be linguistic, social, and cultural, or cultural, may well lie elsewhere. This is particularly clear, in my opinion, in the case of studies that make use of the concept of field directly, so to speak. For a field in orthodox sociology, in the orthodox version of sociology where from this concept is taken, for a field to operate properly, a significant dose of autonomy with regard to other fields is required, and there has to be a competition between the agents involved who must be in search of uh, sim something, symbolic prestige or forms of distinction. In the case of contemporary translation publishing, however, it seems fair to say that barring exceptional cases of literary retranslations of canonical works, perhaps, the struggle for dominance and the ensuing inequalities and imbalances which constitutes, after all, the common denominator of most sociologies, that struggle takes place among the various agents, the major hands, if you like, active in publishing houses. Not between them, really, but from one uh, you know, uh, publishing house to another. Uh, and there are quite a few of those hands. Translators, as such, play a secondary role in this struggle, and when they are prominent in, for example, identifying potential candidates for translation and pushing for publication of a text or an author, they do so in other capacities than their capacity and expertise in translating. For example, as literary critics or members of editorial committees, for ex sometimes, sometimes they act as former translators only, turned authors or publishers. So what, what it all means, uh, because we were asked to take positions today, what it all means is that translators as such can hardly be positioned in all their variation on the map of the national states uh, in which they're active. Their dispositions are not clearly known yet. The few attempts made to draw maps of, of not only past but active translators attempts based on, re based on relevant information about their personal and professional characteristics, often make the point that statistics are missing for the study to be conclusive. Crucially, this is another reason, another motivation, translators do not compete with one another consciously. Uh, they are, of course, competing on the marketplace, but the marketplace is largely anonymous. Indeed, translators tend more to cooperate uh, in a very simple way by subcontracting even you know, outside uh, the literary field uh, than oppose one another in the, sense that a that in the sense that a publisher will fight um, his competitor knowingly over a decision to publish a book, including a translation. Now, 
these are very uh, um, complex issues, and I'm summarizing them uh, perhaps uh, too quickly. Um, and I'm going to introduce a number of caveats. Uh, this doesn't mean, in principle, that a field of translators is unimaginable. Simply that the conditions, in my view, are not satisfied yet. Uh, nor does it imply uh, that there, there aren't very specific cases in history uh, when this documentation is accessible. But, but the point is that the circumstantial lack of evidence for today uh, is worth reflecting on. Take, tr let's try and contrast the situation with uh, other agents in, in another field. Sociologists and historians of literature proper uh, seem to have managed without much problem to study the works and lives of the frontline agents uh, in the field that they delineated for that purpose. And they've done it fairly extensively, even for minor literary figures that could be positioned without too much difficulty, usually after the fact, probably because the field had already been drawn for the major representatives of the national space of which they were part. Uh, thereby contributing the norms and practices in force in that field. Uh, I think that the contrast with translating agents proper as a translator uh, is stark. So much so for translators. Let's see what happens with translations now. Translations, on the other hand, can be located in their relevant field of publishing that is under the authority of whoever commissions them and determines whether they will be read or not. Once the authority has given the green light or the circumstances have led to uh, publication, translations will behave like any other publication that, that is in the context of their new home base. This, after all, has been the most important finding in the study of translations, the Copernician uh, revolution accomplished by uh, Gidon Turi's work that translations are best studied as they function in their host societies um, or fields thereof. The concept of a field of translators, as, 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 as I said earlier, uh, poses problems. That of translations points to a reality, but it is subject to the vagaries of a sophisticated publishing policy, highly regulated but without written rules, or uh, without the participants being aware of those rules, uh, policy upon which translators as such has, have had uh, little control, barring exceptional cases again. Anyway, this field of translations this time, not translators, but translations, typically is heteronymous. It is governed by the principles that govern the fields of each national publishing industry if we want to uh, uh, think in terms of what governs uh, the, function, the functioning of the field. When, when the relevant space of publishing is subject to another, more powerful field set in another country, the autonomy is even less. And this particular configuration, by the way, uh, probably goes a long way towards explaining why the 1995-1996 research program of the Centre de Sociologie Européenne ended up leaving translations at the time and translators out of the study they conducted of the field of literary publishing uh, in France. The acknowledgement, some of you may remember because we already mentioned this in the framework of the seminar last week, uh, being that uh, it was too complex. Now, why should... Uh, the data concerning translators be more complex than the data concerning publishing or even uh, authors? This is a question worth asking. The, the point I'm making here, as you've seen, is a conceptual one. Uh, perhaps also uh, it is methodological. It is that this kind of sociology, born out and constructed out of specific national circumstances, tends to leave in the dark, or at the very least, to minimize whatever signs of agency the community of translators and individual translators, and also whatever unique characteristics, linguistics, linguistic, social, or cultural, 
translation works display in the ordinary world of sociocultural relationships. What I'm also submitting to your appreciation is that this bl what I call this blind spot of sociological theory uh, may in fact have accompanied the silence of other structural or systemic approaches in the disciplines, in various disciplines of the human sciences. An artifact, if you will, of the way in which research programs were designed. In fact, I'm not saying that those research programs, largely shared by many disciplines from the point of view I'm speaking today, are or were founded on premises that were wrong, just that they worked best and still work well in those situations where strong national spaces, cohesive because they were made to be so, are the frames of reference. And for major figures, or the more standard forms and features studied. Um, and I'm not saying either that such configurations are on the decline. On the contrary, it would seem that in all those spaces where the borders of traditional nation states have been shaken, or even have lost some of their currency, as in Europe, uh, from what we hear, cultural rearrangements have taken place that seem uh, to have given rise to new state national borders, or borders, if not as rigid, at least modeled after the state national design. It's, uh, so what, what I'm saying is that the desire for borders have never been so strong in these times, in, in my perception of what uh, is going on. Uh, understandably so, since borders mean protection and security, or from external in intrusion or worse, invasion. But where does this leave translators and translations? Where does this leave sociologists of translation? And more generally, translation scholars and those of us in the human sciences who believe that cultural research has never been so urgent if we wish to, to avoid, uh, forgive me, a regression to 19th century thinking. In fact, regression may not even be the right term. In many ways, we've never left the 19th century. My second uh, proposition or set of propositions uh, will uh, concern translation studies proper. I referred earlier uh, already to a field of translation studies. Unlike the uh, missing fields of translators and translations, in, or, according to orthodoxy at least, there is every sign that there is a space of scholarly research in which specialists debate various aspects of an object constructed as translation. Interestingly, this space uh, can almost instantly be mapped internationally. Its language of expression is English, although native English speakers must be a minority. Positioning its representatives may not be quite as easy as in the case of publishers or authors in a given country, and this may have to do precisely with the fact that the field this time is international, not national, but the main protagonists on the map, and more tellingly the terms of uh, the exchanges, uh, are well known. And this is, in a sense, uh, what we are doing uh, today and uh, what uh, we are doing in most uh, translation programs uh, or there's a relation to what I've just said. As is well known, some 30 years ago, uh, forgive me if I'm stating the obvious here, uh, from within academic communities in the Western world and in different subsectors thereof, rather peripheral than central, a group of researchers emerged who started, who began showing an interest in a practice of writing that up to then had been either self-taught and the object of dicta on the best way of performing the task, or had simply triggered reactions of admiration or disrepute by critics and uh, readers alike. This emergence took place, by the way, at about the time when established disciplines in the social sciences and the humanities began showing signs of fatigue. 
It may be that this development, the emergence of a, translate, of a field of translation studies, is part of cultural history, and it would be good to think of it as an object of study uh, for itself, that is to say, a cultural development that took place at a certain date in certain socio-historical circumstances and may continue on or perhaps vanish. At any rate, fields, uh, even fields of scholarship, evolve and they will always evolve. Ours is already changing fast and no one knows, of course, to what ends. The fact is that more and more researchers in the disciplines of the humanities and social sciences have been showing an interest in translation. The word appears frequently in many areas of knowledge development, such as comparative literature, which is expected, the humanities, perhaps less expectedly, sociology, as we've just seen, anthropology, which may seem natural until we realize that this inclusion of the term or this taking up of the object reflects a shift, a serious shift in the more traditional relation of that discipline to the other, but also newer areas such as gender studies, political science, in which transnational politics is uh, all the rage now, the arts of representation and performance arts also refer to translation, not to mention media studies, and what perhaps should be considered as a return to former concerns, deconstruction hermeneutics. All those reconsiderations and extensions of the concepts of translation are taking place on the same ground that sociocultural work has been exploring in the last 30 years in the field of translation studies proper. Although this time with the intent, as far as I can see, uh, as an outsider uh, to those disciplines, with the intent of pushing back or even erasing the borders that defined how to carve an object in the discipline. In other words, similar observations regarding the limitations of nation-based concepts in recent attempts to develop a sociology of translation could be reformulated and adapted for other more traditional disciplines and the newer ones where from the new energies and new ways of formulating questions have emerged. And this is perhaps uh, the main proposition that I would like to submit uh, to your uh, reflection and perhaps we can talk about it later on. The term translation and the resulting multiplex concept have acted as a potential solution to problems originating in the growing awareness within the disciplines of the national origins of human science theories. Or if you believe that awareness may be slightly in excess of the reality, at least an increasing malaise or discomfort at making use of concepts and theories inseparable from those national origins. Translation, in other words, came up as a problematic, as, as a response to a certain dissatisfaction. And, it, and the same thing that took place in, uh, about 30 years ago is repeating itself in many ways in newer areas of research and perhaps also more established disciplines. Uh, it's, um, it is not a neutral term uh, in many ways. Now, it is not possible in the context of this uh, presentation to even begin to sketch the conditions in which this awareness or discomfort uh, developed. Uh, drawing from historical studies published by specialists of those do domains, uh, I have set out in the last year uh, to explore uh, what I call the nationalistic environments in which disciplines like linguistics and sociology uh, developed in France and Germany. It's well known, but what is less known perhaps is how this uh, um, uh, connects with uh, the notion of translation. Of a few, I'm not aware of anybody having done this uh, anyway. Uh, 